Is it We're live. live. Okay, good uh, morning, still morning, everyone. This is uh, Todd and Amanda. It's Friday, it's Facebook, and we're live, so that can only mean one thing. What's it mean, Amanda? Facebook Live Friday! Exactly, and we are here <laughs> in our downtown uh, building today, and we're going to talk a little bit about... If you uh, follow us on Facebook, which if you're watching this now, you probably do, you noticed that earlier this week we mentioned it is National Locator Awareness and Safety Week. And so we're very happy to, to mention that and celebrate that. But we want to talk a little more about it because it is also Safe Digging Month in April. And a lot of people are spending a lot more time at home, not going out as much, looking for things to do, and they're doing projects around the house and in the yard. And now more than ever, it's very important that you call 811 before you dig. We're here with Kelly Smith, who works in engineering services. And we're gonna to talk to her a little bit about that. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what locators are, what they do? It's a, it's a fairly you know, simple term, but they're out there every day. People probably don't realize it. What, what is a locator? A locator to me should actually be called a damage prevention specialist. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Really, yeah. In That's really um, damage prevention is our number one priority to keep our facilities safe and keep our customers safe. And anybody can call 811. Anybody can call 811. You just dial 811. It's a free service. Everyone has two full business days to come out and mark their underground utility lines. And that's what you'll see sometimes uh, if you're walking, going out for a walk, or you just happen to be in a neighborhood where some work is about to be done, you'll see the various colors painted on the, maybe on the concrete or in the grass, and that's marking underground utility surfaces. And uh, even, if you're, even if you live in a neighborhood that has overhead power lines, trust me, there's underground stuff there too, and you can't just go digging. And it's not necessarily as deep as you might think it is. You might think, oh, well, I'm just planting a tree or I'm replacing a mailbox. There's that stuff surely deeper than that. No, it's not. And stop calling me surely. Um, it, and <laughs> especially in the case of some telecommunications uh, equipment, um, uh, those wires are even more shallow. Uh, so you can risk hitting those. Um, it, with, with all the stuff that's going on, uh, you mentioned two business days is what, what, what we usually go for. Is that still holding steady or is there is it taking a little longer because of the situation we're in? Well, with everyone at home, everybody has more projects. So ticket load has gone up a little bit, but we still respond within our two full business days. Okay, and so these guys come out, men and women come out, and they, they paint uh, where, the, where the markings are. And every time we mention Safe Digging Month, there's always a few people who say, um, after they've come out and done this, you should go out and take a picture of it for future reference, because especially if they're painting on the grass, grass is going to grow, you're going to mow it, marking's going to go away. Um, so that's always a good thing, too, for future reference where you know where those things are. Um, how do they know? How do they know what's, how do they know what's below? Well, we have equipment that we use, electronic, magnetic, sends out a signal on that facility that's underground, and we paint it according to what the facility is. Red is electric, blue is water, yellow is gas, and fiber, cable TV, telephone is orange. Okay, so let's say I'm out in my yard and I see where they painted uh, some red markings on my yard. How far away do I need to stay from that red marking? I mean, I, I, it's accurate, of course, but is there a recommended, well, if you know it's right here, you should, you should not dig within one foot, two feet? Three feet, whatever. Yes, 18 inches is the tolerance zone. If you're going to dig either side of that mark, it must be 18 inches and hand dug. And, and approximately how deep is the equipment usually, more or less? It depends. Can't really give a depth. It might oh, have okay. went in two foot 10 years ago. Grading could be sure. one foot. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's nice to always call before you dig so you know what's there. Now, yeah. if, someone, if someone doesn't call, 811 before they dig and they end up hitting something which which happens um, are there what 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 are the consequences of that you get a bill that's kind of what I assume but yeah. Yeah. you could be out of facilities you could knock yourself out your neighbor out your your neighborhood out so it's best to always call 
Well, and I would think too, there's a safety issue involved there too. If you hit some yes. underground electric equipment, you could yes. you conceivably be seriously injured, if not killed, yes. by the by the voltage. I was on a. We were talking earlier before we started rolling. I was on a conference call uh, with uh, some other. Uh, utilities of the American Public Gas Association and one of the members said that they have seen just in the month of April which isn't even over yet 19 residential dig-ins uh, in their service area from people not calling 811 and going out to do a project and they hit a natural gas main or, or something like that so uh, you, you don't you don't want that to happen to you you don't want to uh, infuriate your neighbors when you knock out the cable or the power or, or something like that. Yeah, and that's probably what you're likely to hit is the cable. <laughs> yes. yeah. And everybody working from home now, you, you know, you don't... Yeah, kids doing schoolwork from home. You don't want to anger them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the last thing that, uh, that any of us need is for the kids suddenly not to be able to, uh, to do their, their schoolwork. Um, is there anything we're leaving out about uh, locators, uh, I know that they have a, that, this is something I always find interesting, I know they have a, they call it the Locator Rodeo um, every year. Is that still going to happen this year? Has that been pushed off because of the virus? As far as we know, it's still still going on. And this so is we'll where, have probably two compete this year also. And what is that? And it's basically, yeah. there, who can, is it t t uh, a speed thing, accuracy? Huh. Or, okay. The speed and accuracy fine. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. I've never been to one of those. I've seen pictures of one, but I haven't been to one. I think that would be something. Uh, I've seen the line workers rodeo um, when that was it was here. Um, I think a, a locator rodeo would be pretty cool. It's like digging for buried treasure. I know who, can, who can find it the quickest. We had two go last year, and one of our guys placed third overall. Awesome. We were super proud of that. Yeah. Have you ever been? Or I went year before last. Yeah. What's it like? I mean, it's, it's very neat, <laughs> very <laughs> neat. Um, pressure, you know, you're on the time limit, right. but accuracy is also, but it's, it's pretty neat to watch what they do. Cool. It's kind of, uh, I don't have rodeo for what Amanda and I do. No. We should start one. We could, we could. I don't know what the, events, know what the would events would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's called awards. That's the submissions. Yeah. 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 To do all the submissions, I make him do all of them. I mean, I go here. This video might work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, before we wrap up, a few things uh, to mention. Um, getting close to the end of April. Uh, let's say twenty fourth. There, it's. Just, it's the, I'm so sick of the coronavirus. What day is it? It is the twenty fourth. Friday. It is Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to double check. Yeah, it's probably good. Probably should have checked that before we started Facebook Live Friday. It could have been Tuesday for all we know. <laughs> um, so so sick. anyway, we're getting closer to the end of the month and uh, the stay at home order. We are starting to get some questions about reopening. Um, those decisions are being made. Uh, and by our leadership team, they are in discussions. They uh, don't let Todd make those kinds yeah, of I'm, calls. I'm, yeah, they, they no. keep me out of those kinds of things. Um, but uh, our leadership team uh, has daily discussions. Uh, we're, of course, in close contact with city officials as well. And when that information uh, becomes available, we will, of course, put it on our social media pages on our website. But it is still business as usual at Huntsville Utilities business with us online our customer information center is still running and a lot of them are working from home but you can still call get your questions answered um, you can send us a message through social media and we'll try to do our best to get the answer for you um, you can still do all your financial business with us uh, through our self-service kiosks our drop boxes this is something that we failed to mention and we apologize for this um, we've been talking a lot about the ways you can still make a payment or partial payment or full payment on your bill through the kiosk through my account online uh, over the phone and things like that. We also have drop boxes uh, through the service area. Those are still being used. So if you want to use a, a drop box that's close to you, you can do that too. They are still being collected regularly and you can find a list of those locations on our website. And we apologize for not making that uh, clearer earlier. Um, but it's still business as usual. We're open for business, just not in the lobby. So um, Amanda, this is the part where you say, where you tell me all the things I forgot to say. 
Um, we've got some new videos that are going to be posted very soon. True, true, some new videos. Um, and keep um, an eye out for those. I think um, mm -hmm. a lot of posts this this week have basically been. Well, um, we had Earth Day. Earth Day was the twenty second. It was, was this week. Two days ago, which would have been Wednesday. <laughs> Earth Day was Wednesday. Yep. Um, so ordinarily we do some things with Project Green Team uh, out at uh, Hayes Nature Preserve. Those unfortunately had to be put on hold because of uh, the virus. Of course, today is, is Arbor, Arbor Day. That's why. That's why we're here. When, all the ships when you come plant daily, a tree. <laughs> oh no! Cool. It's planting um, trees. Trees have to go yes. real deep. And we want to give a shout out to the guys in line clearance um, who were recognized most. Remember, they, they planted a tree out at Challenger uh, Elementary. They were recognized by the Arbor Day Foundation for their work. Tree Line USA. Tree Line USA uh, facility is the uh, award they uh, received. Because <clears throat> uh, believe it or not, there. our line clearance people don't just hack at trees. No, there's, there's a science to it. There's yeah. an interesting science to it. Uh, and if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see an employee spotlight with Kelly McNabb, who's one of our line clearance supervisors, and uh, he can tell you more about trees than than you thought was possible to know. <laughs> but they know a lot about this, and they're they're very good at what they do, and we want to thank them for that. We also want to mention one uh, kind of disturbing thing that happened yesterday. We put it on our Facebook and Twitter pages. We want to remind people of that. There was a uh, tornado warning siren in North Huntsville that was vandalized. The, elect the meter was knocked off, and the electric box inside was, uh, was uh, damaged. Um, we were alerted to it by Madison County EMA, and uh, our crews went out, were able to repair that, uh, which there was a, a threat of severe weather yesterday afternoon, it fortunately did not really materialize, but of course, all those sirens, very important. And uh, if you have any information about that, um, a, a uh, complaint was filed with Huntsville Police, and if you do have any information about that, feel free to give them a call and, and mention that, because we really, those sirens need to be working and I know that that post resonated with a lot of people. We got a lot of the angry emoticons or emojis. Yeah. A little angry reaction, orange-faced guy. Yeah. We got a lot of those, and rightfully so. Um, so if you know anything about that, uh, you might want to give our friends at HPD a call. What else did I forget? Um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. We wanted, to, we wanted to go ahead and do this now um, because we didn't want to tread on uh, Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook Live that he's doing yeah. earlier today. So he <laughs> called and said, hey, can you guys do yours earlier in the day? But I know more people are going to want to watch you than are going to watch me. And I said, Mark, for you, yeah. You got anything else for us, Kelly? <clears throat> That's all. Just be sure and call before you dig. And thanks, Kelly, for, for doing this. Um, she didn't even hesitate. And Most people, when we ask them to do this, they, they hesitate a lot. Yeah. Um, but Kelly was like, yes, I'll do it. And we're very happy for that because she has all the information and we don't. Yep. So, and now you have the information. All right. So we'll see you guys next week. That's the plan. We'll yep. And if it's randomly on Thursday because I uh, get the days mixed up. <laughs> no, I'll try to remember. I'll put a reminder on my phone or something. All right. All right. That's it. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay.